Welcome back. It's great to see you again. Last time we talked, we talked about the prairie biome. Today, we will talk about the deciduous forest biome. Remember that in the deciduous forest biome, it rains pretty frequently. In the fall, the trees lose their leaves and go dormant, which is another word for going to sleep. The trees stay dormant through the winter. In the spring, before the leaves of the trees begin to grow, many beautiful small flowering plants cover the forest floor. Then the leaves of the trees emerge. Once the leaves of the trees begin to grow, it is shady on the forest floor, which keeps it cooler than out on the prairie in the summer. Deciduous forests are found across the United States, but the deciduous forest changes from east to west. In the east, the deciduous forest can look like this. These are maple and birch trees. Farther west, the deciduous forest looks like this. These are mostly oak and hickory trees. Here are oak leaves and hickory leaves. Can you find leaves that look like this outside? The deciduous forest on the eastern edge of Kansas looks like this. When the first indigenous peoples lived here, they learned a lot about the plants that grew here. This is a willow tree. The bark can be used to treat pain. Fireweed helps to heal burns. Here are some other plants that you may find in a deciduous forest. This is American ginseng. One place it grows is Missouri. The Pawnee and many other tribes traditionally used this plant for medicine. People knew to harvest some and replant some so it would keep growing. Lots of people still harvest and use the roots for medicine and plant it in the forest. This fruit is called a pawpaw. It grows in Kansas. Lots of people ate pawpaw long ago. People eat it today, too. It tastes like banana. This plant is called jewelweed. Many different Native American tribes discovered long ago that jewelweed is good for treating poison ivy and to stop the sting if you walk through stinging nettles. Jewelweed may be eaten by deer. In places where there are a lot of deer, jewelweed has adapted by making fruit over a longer time, so the deer might not find all of it and some of the seed will survive. Watch, can you see the seeds exploding out of the jewelweed fruit? These trees are called honey locusts. They have a different kind of adaptation to protect themselves from being eaten by deer. The sharp thorns discourage the deer. The plants in the deciduous forest make it a good place for herbivores to live. Deer are the most common large herbivore in the deciduous forest. Deer mostly eat saplings, baby trees, and shrubs, but they also eat other plants. One adaptation of deer to life in the deciduous forest is camouflage, which protects them. 
Another adaptation of deer is their very strong legs. They are very fast runners and often live in groups. Why might they need to be very fast runners and travel in groups? That's right, predators. One predator in the deciduous forest that eats deer is the cougar. Cougars are very good hunters. They have pads on their feet that help them to stay very quiet when hunting. There are not as many cougars as there used to be in the deciduous forest. There used to be wolves here too, and they also ate deer. Because they ate people's livestock, they were hunted and killed. Now, because there are a few cougars and no wolves, in some places there are too many deer. When there are too many deer, there is not enough food for all of them. Hmm, for the prairie biome, we talked about plants, herbivores, and carnivores. For the deciduous biome, we also talked about plants, herbivores, and carnivores. Another way to think about how these groups interact is to see each step or level in the flow of energy in a forest ecosystem. We call this way of thinking, or model, trophic levels. Trophic levels help us think about how these groups of organisms interact. Plants are called producers because they create their own energy using sunlight, water, and CO2, carbon dioxide. Animals that get their energy by eating plants are called primary consumers. Animals that get their energy by eating animals that eat plants are called secondary consumers. This is called a trophic pyramid. But there is one more group of organisms that helps energy flow in an ecosystem. Decomposers. Decomposers are organisms that get their energy by breaking down all of the waste from other animals. There are lots of decomposers in the deciduous forest. Some of them are so small that you can't see them, and some of them are different kinds of fungi. Here are some cool fungi you can find in the deciduous forest. These are helping to break down the wood of dead trees. So, what have we learned about the deciduous forest biome? Are there a lot of trees? Yes! Is it hot and dry? No! Do you remember the trophic levels? Look at these organisms. Which ones do you think are the producers? Plants are producers. They produce their own energy. Which ones do you think are the primary consumers? Herbivores like deer and chipmunks that get energy from eating plants are primary consumers. Which ones are the secondary consumers? Animals like cougars and wolves that get energy from eating animals that eat plants are secondary consumers. What about the decomposers? Right, decomposers get energy by breaking down waste from plants and animals. Great job, everybody. Don't forget to look for books about the deciduous forest at your library. Thanks for learning with us and see you next time.